Let's go! I promised you a Spencer Rattler breakdown, and guess what? You are going to get it. Let me know if you want me to break down all the top quarterbacks in this year's NFL draft cycle. And the funny thing here with Spencer being the first breakdown we're doing is that he's not one of the top NFL draft prospects this cycle. But there are some games, such as this Georgia game, that makes you think maybe he should be. So this is a throw you just watched. We're going to get some all 22 action going here in just a second. I want to show you the end zone copy here. I do always seem to find Rattler's base to be pretty sound. And look at this missile he throws into Xavier Leggett to where only he could get it. So we move ahead to later in this drive, and this is what is taking over pretty much all levels of football are these three-level flood concepts where you're running a go here, you're running a delay here with this receiver, he acts like he's blocking, and then he goes, and your job here is to fake this quick throw right here and then hit him, but if they sink back and play him, guess what? You could just come back and actually make this throw right here, so... All right, so we move ahead to this throw right here from Spencer Rattler, and part of the knock on him is going to be the overall lack of elite athleticism. I don't think he has a special arm, but you know, you'll see him under a lot of pressure here. He's able to get this football out uh, to the right side and avoid the sack, but it sets up this third and 16. And you'll see they end up scoring a touchdown here. Fake screen to the left, work back to the right side to Juice Wells. That was their best receiver who uh, elected to not play through pain. I'll say that. <laughs> South Carolina fans will tell you about that. But all right, so we get to the next drive. Georgia down 7-3 to three early, and this is a big, big, big-time throw from the opposite hash while getting pressured. And you'll see this footwork is just a lot cleaner this time, if you ask me. And look, he's getting ready to get hit. Protection breaks down, and he is ripping this football. Watch this. He is deciding to throw the ball now. Okay, uh, before he's out of his break, or it's pretty simultaneous still. Overall, some really good separation throwing the football to Leggett, who's going to be a big draft pick. And you'll get the end zone angle here. Where South Carolina had their issues was at the center position. Just their offensive line in general was not good. And I think that's good for an NFL quarterback um, that you played behind bad offensive lines at college, right? Because that's how it is in the NFL. You're going to be under heavy pressure. And while, you know, there's a guy right in his face, he delivers an absolute strike for a first down. All right, so we then get to the very next play, and this is where people are going to have some issue with Spencer Rattler, right? Athletically, he's just okay. As a runner, he ran about a five flat 40, and yes, he could pick up some first downs with his legs as we, can, as we will break down, but this right here is just going down way too easy. You know, one DT is able to, you know, basically swing you down right there. All right, so we get to this third down this is the first play of the second quarter so Georgia's defense is going to come out with something exotic as they normally do on third and long and of course South Carolina is going to call up a play to hopefully pick up all the yardage here and this right here ends up being one of the absolute best reps I've seen from Spencer Rattler even though this ends up being an incompletion so let's first start off with the protection here it breaks down all right this is a really good job by Georgia coming out of the timeout and doing some stimming, which basically means you're moving the defensive line around and switching up the matchups. And you'll see that they stem into a completely different look here. And now this offensive tackle thought he was going up against a bigger player. Now he's going up against more of a speed rusher. And guess what happens? This offensive tackle gets a late jump and he's on his butt. So this play is basically dead. Um, look, it's third in, in, in Jerusalem here to pick up all these yards. And there's just nothing, absolutely nothing that's going to get open on third and long. Okay. So Rattler's got to make something happen at this point. Okay, once again, nothing is open at all. So he makes this guy miss, resets his feet, and you'll see from the end zone angle how accurate of a football this actually was. The fact that he was able to reset, avoid the hit, and at least make this 
a, a somewhat 50-50 play is absolutely freaking ridiculous. So once again, you'll get the stem right here from the edge player. And once again, offensive tackle gets destroyed. Okay. And once again, Rattler, not really mobile, but he's mobile in the pocket. And look at the accuracy of this football. Bang. Okay. That's just an excellent play by the defender. The fact that that football was leading this tight end, Trey Knox, who's not much of a separator, that is ridiculous quarterback play. It really is. Now, if you love deep football breakdowns such as this one, please hit the subscribe button. We are close to 1K subs. And when you hit 1K, you can start making some money off your content. So that goes a long way. Now, we get to this third and two. Once again, this is absolutely phenomenal quarterback play by Spencer Rattler. Um, South Carolina across the way likes to cut block these defensive linemen for Georgia. And guess what? The right tackle whiffs the cut block. So this was supposed to be just a quick little out route to the running back. You have to like your leverage here with the RB going up against this linebacker. And this would have been there if the right tackle didn't blow this cut block. That is an easy first down, but it can't be thrown. So Rattler decides to eat it and the thing that's crazy is across the way all these cut blocks were missed okay um well they weren't necessarily missed they just weren't all that clean they're lucky to not get a penalty right here because you're not allowed to cut and then also hit someone up high because he whiffed it wasn't a penalty so in theory this could have been a 15 yarder but nevertheless rattler sits in here and look at this throw Okay, he gets lucky that this DB falls down. He throws an absolute dart to this receiver, 89. The only thing here is 89. You've got to keep your feet, man. There is nobody near you. You catch this and you make a safety miss. This ends up being a bigger gain. But he falls right down after the catch. He's not a single-digit playmaker, so... If you're not a jersey number, a lower digit jersey number, I'm okay with you falling down. So after starting the game with a bunch of good calls, South Carolina, as this game moved on, just started to get out schemed by Georgia. And a good way of knowing this or seeing this is when you have guys like the Georgia DB running the route better than an NFL draft prospect. That means they're just sitting, waiting on all these routes. And you'll see basically everything is just covered. Um... You know, right here, in, in a perfect world, you would like to see him work back to this running back right here because he would have all day in a bag of chips to pick up, you know, a, a huge gain. But Rattler throws up a decent 50-50 ball. I'm not a huge fan of that throw right there. That DB could have easily undercut that pick. But once again, if your protection just keeps getting caved in, you're having to throw a lot of these back foot kinds of throws, right? where, you know, that lends itself to, to tip balls and potential INTs. All right, so we get to this third down play, and sometimes Spencer's ball location can be better, right? So you motion Leggett, your best uh, receiver, going up against Bullard, a really good DB for Georgia. He's got leverage on him. You see Bullard's inside this hash, and Leggett is actually running this thing directly up to hash, and this is an out. So Rattler pre-snap... After this motion, um, this is a clear man coverage indicator. This is the matchup that he's going to like. And he sees it all the way through. This throw is just not the best. It forces Leggett to leave his feet. And if he's able to catch that in stride, he might be picking up a first down. But he's short by a yard, as you can see. Now, once again, it's not a bad throw. You know, on first and second down, this is an okay throw. But on third down, this ball does need to be hitting the receiver um, in stride to where he's not stretching out and falling short of the line to gain. All right, so we pick it up here. It's first and it looks like 15. And Rattler, this is just really good stuff. I know just looking at this from the all 22, this looks like this post is just wide open. This is just an all-time bad coverage bust right here. You normally don't see this with Georgia secondaries. Uh, but the safety um, needs to be capping this deep post right here. And you'll see that 89 does get wide open. But nevertheless, it's just there's just no time, right? Rattler playing as well as he did in a game where there was just so much pressure being given up. He does a good job stepping up and making something happen with his legs. And you'll see... 
throughout this tape, him making plays with his legs. It's, it really is uh, impressive given his overall lack of top in athleticism. You know, we did a full video yesterday comparing him, of course, to uh, Brock Purdy. And Brock did, and Spencer are the same exact quarterback, but Brock is just slightly faster and just slightly better with his legs. But Spencer does give you something. Once again, two hands on the football, fighting through that pocket, two hands all the way through, and just it's just good stuff. Now, this ended up being a really good job by the South Carolina coaching staff because if you see that a safety is struggling to stay on top of post, come back right to it, right? And that's exactly what they do. This safety um, struggles to stay on top of this post right here from Xavier Leggett, okay? So at the beginning of this, nothing looks to be getting open, right? But Spencer Rattler buys time, allows Leggett to cross the face of this safety, and he throws a really good ball into this space to Leggett. That's just great, great, great quarterbacking. And you'll see it here. He gets a little bit of pressure, okay? Um, looks like there is a little bit of a protection breakdown. You know, with a three-tech being right here, you would like to think the guard would just pick this up. Instead, the guard crosses face here, and it looks like this center was supposed to pick up this three-tech, but instead, it's the running back coming over here to pick up this three-tech. Um, if you guys want to break down of this exact protection mistake happening, it happened in the Super Bowl, one of our most viral videos uh, versus the 49ers, and... Three tech unblocked, like Chris Jones in that game. So now the running back has got to make a play. And that's actually not bad by the running back overall. And Spencer just fades away, ends up making a really good throw right here to Leggett, uh, who hung in the air for forever. Ha, ha, ha. Look at this. Somebody cut this video and put, I believe I can fly. Look at this. Ha, 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 ha. All right, we get back to here and remember... That play we showed you a little bit earlier where you have three levels. You have the go route, you have the fake block, and then go. And if none of that works, you go back to the initial fake throw. You'll see that Georgia covers this better. So now they have two guys right here. They have the second level um, fake blocker picked up. And then this guy does eventually get open. But the truth is... There's not enough time, once again, to go through all of this, right? Um, you know, Spencer Rattler sees that there is a lane for him to run through, and we'll give you the end zone angle to make it a little bit easier for you to see. And not only does he have a lane to run through, he makes a linebacker miss in the hole. So here we go. This is Dumas Johnson. This is one of the better linebackers um, in the SEC. And Rattler, look at this. Juke Tim out of his shoes. That's some good stuff. Not obviously Jaden Daniels level, but good enough to pick up a first. And then we get to the best red zone play call of this game, okay? So the design of this is to roll out to the right, but then hit the tight end cross field to the left, okay? We've done a lot of film studies uh, at the NFL level, how they're incorporating these types of plays. And you'll see that the tight end Trey Knox, he acts like he's blocking, and then he actually just leaks and loops up field, okay? So you'll see that this post takes this corner out, and look at all this room, and this ends up being a really good throw by Rattler, okay? And you'll see it here. It's so tough to keep up with these tight ends who just kind of leak, okay? And this actually ends up being a really good job by two, um, I think that's Mondin. Um, once he sees this tight end cross his face, you'll see immediately he, he's like, okay, that's where the ball is going. That's really good coaching right there by Georgia. Okay. And he's able to throw a very catchable ball for his tight end and he's able to come back and get him. But South Carolina eventually scores to take a 14 to three lead. All right, as someone that comes from the SEC, this is one of the most difficult matchups on the road against the best program in the sport, right? So what I like to do, if I was a play caller, and obviously I'm not a play caller, uh, this is second and a long ways to go. I would be very careful running these longer developing plays, okay? Georgia just brings basically everyone here, bring a slot corner blitz, and you'll see there's just nothing open. 
All right, it's a three-man route concept. It's all deep stuff. And knowing Georgia runs these layered pressures and you don't really have an athletic QB, you're just not giving him any chance to succeed uh, right here, okay? Um, And you'll see it from the end zone angle. There is absolutely nothing Spencer Rattler can do. These are all cross-hash, deeper throws, and you you got guys blitzing from all different angles, and your offensive line's not good, and your quarterback's not athletic, I, I just don't understand that play call at all. All right, so now it sets up third, and uh, so now it sets up third in Australia on the road. Crowd's going crazy. You're only up by four, and you just run a go ball to Xavier Leggett. Look at this ball location. Bang, it hit him right in the chest, Okay. And you'll see it. You know, you want the ball to get out quick. You don't want a safety uh, right here. Ball does get out quick. It it hit him right there, okay? Is this pass interference? You know, in college, I don't believe the DB has to turn his head. He just kind of jumps into him. They're not calling that in Athens. Ha, 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 ha. What do I know? On first down, very next drive, they are um, running something somewhat similar, okay? Um, three deeper routes, and guess what? Spencer Rattler sees that this deep crosser is going to be open, right? This DB deoccupies the space of the field, so Rattler just knows, hey, I got a decent pocket. Let's just throw a strike right here, and he does. You can make a case that this ball was a little bit late. Um, Could this have been delivered sooner? I believe it could have. But I also understand really allowing this play action fake and allowing this route to clear out. So, yeah, you know, he's looking center field at this safety. You have to know that this is where you need to go. So, yeah, I mean, that ball could have been delivered quicker, but it's still accurately thrown, and it's a first down. Obviously, this is going to haunt South Carolina. um, And honestly, I think this play right here really altered their season you would have never thunk that this would have ended up being a five and seven team knowing how well they're playing versus the number one power rated team in the country so it's one of these tight end slips that they were able to almost score on a touchdown earlier and this time it's just perfectly executed it just there was too much pressure right here on Rattler he had to step up but right here You've just got to be able to make this throw. And he throws it short. It hits the ground. I believe they ended up ruling this an incompletion. It's tough because you're asking this tight end to get all the way over here to kick out this backer. And South Carolina gets very unlucky that number 10, Dumas Johnson, was actually coming on a blitz. So it makes it that much harder for this tight end to get over here in time to really get a piece on Dumas Johnson. So Spencer Rattler's got to step up right here. And I think he could have stepped up, reset his feet, and actually delivered a better ball. Okay, It's also tough in this situation because this is a longer developing play. Um, you're throwing this football with the tight ends back turned to you, okay? So it is a difficult throw, but man, if you hit him while he's standing up, he might be scoring if we get a decent block right here, and that would have given South Carolina the lead. All right, so we get to this third and seven, and this is where a really bad sack taken by Spencer Rattler is one that I don't blame on him at all, right? So we're in the extended red zone portion. You do not under any circumstance want to take a sack because it will certainly knock you out of field goal range on a wet day on the road. First mistake is waiting until the very end of this play clock to snap this football. Whether or not you want to uh, admit this, it does give the defense an opportunity to really time their blitzes uh, a lot better. The second thing here is you have to look at this situation if you're South Carolina that you have two downs to pick this up, right? Um, so what I don't want to do is run all my routes deep, okay? And you'll see on the All-22, he really had no chance whatsoever, okay? And I wanted to show you just um, this version because y- you can't see the play clock on the All-22. It's not on him, 
Okay, coaches have to recognize that great defensive coordinators know the benefit of a blitz right here. Okay, you've got to run something quicker. You, you just do. Okay, because they're blitzing everyone and they're just sitting at on all these routes at the sticks. Okay, and you know your offensive line has not been able to protect any of their exotic pressures and they're not able to hear. And Rattler just has no chance um, right there. Okay, now, could you make a case that a more athletic quarterback is able to step up and somehow, some way get through here? Maybe so, um, but he, he just falls down, and that's the play. And you'll see nothing is open. Absolutely nothing is open, okay? This eventually does open up, okay, because these DBs are sitting really heavy on the sticks, uh, right here because they're expecting the pressure to get home. So maybe if you're able to step up, reset, you're hitting this ball right here for the lead. But still, it's just a bad play call in that situation. It really is. All right, here we go. It's third and Timbuk two, South Carolina down by three. Okay. This is one of the best throws I've seen of any NFL quarterback um, during this draft cycle. It is truly breathtaking how good Spencer Rattler was on this play, okay? So it's third down and forever, and Georgia is just going to be sitting on everything, right? Once again, I am of the belief that in this spot, you've got to understand that you have two downs to pick this up, okay? So I don't mind if this right here gets thrown, but he elects to not do that, all right? So now he is under a lot of pressure, and maybe... This was an out and up the entire way. No, that's not. Um, that's where this should have gone. Still, this is redunculous that he was able to work all the way to this backside dig. And you'll see on the end zone angle, this hit him right in the chest. Okay. Spencer Rattler's got a guy coming right in his face. Pause. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, Georgia, once again, just getting very exotic. Okay. 13 is actually looping all the way around to this backside A gap, and there's really just no way to track this guy, okay? Well, actually, I'm not sure if he was. The tight end uh, got a, a, a chip right there, so he might have actually just redirected 13 all the way through here. I don't know. Uh, so that's a guy that's actually the intended receiver. So 13's coming right down the middle, and... You know, this is a worst type of pressure, A-gap pressure right down the gut. And look at this throw. Look at this. While he is getting blown to smithereens, all right, and just let's just freeze frame it again. Bang is when he's throwing this ball, okay? Look at where it actually lands, all right? Bang, right in the chest, and he dropped it, Okay. That would have been a first down, and that would have been on every highlight reel in America. Ah, 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 ah. All right, so one thing uh, Georgia didn't really do a great job of is capping these deep posts. Okay, once again, it's number 14 again. This was a good job by South Carolina seeing uh, this matchup where if it's 14 right here, he has inside leverage, so you don't want to get beat to the inside. Maybe he's thinking that uh, the safety here – uh, Starks is staying right here, but I don't know. You'll see that this actually does open up, all right, to Xavier Leggett, all right, and bang, he's right here, okay? Not the easiest throw, but he's under so much pressure that there really is just no chance for Rattler uh, to get this off. Maybe you can reset your feet right here and then throw this football, okay? Or you could reset your feet and hit this dig, but Rattler sees all this space to run through, and that's what he elects to do. So um, he scrambles all the way over here. Now, the reason why I would have loved to have seen him throw this post is you see he's looking right at Leggett. You can see that's the route he's looking at right there, and he decides to, to not rip it, okay? Um that would have been hard to throw that dig right there on the run. So it's smart to just take these yards. But in that situation, when you're down by 10 in the fourth quarter, I would like to see that ball ripped uh, to Leggett. But maybe you guys uh, disagree with me, and that's fine. 
All right, I've gotten the trolley comment. Well, why aren't you a coach breaking down the film? I am not a coach. I'm not as talented uh, as these guys. But if there was something I would do if I joined any college staff in America, especially one like South Carolina, if you're playing these big teams, you know, in order to win these games, almost every single upset over a Georgia and LSU, Ohio State features fourth down conversions, right? You have to understand that there are times, you see, this is third and long. There are times when you just have to take the yards that are given to you and then just pick it up on fourth down, okay? Right here, bang, they're just giving you this, okay? Take this right here. Take this right here, all right? And let's live to fight uh, for a fourth down, right? Who knows? You might pick this up and and he breaks a tackle and, and picks it up, but... We don't need to force this, right? We don't need to lock in on Leggett. This is a very difficult throw from this hash all the way over here with all these DBs playing back, right? If there are seven DBs at the sticks, you're probably not going to complete something, okay? So I would tell this tight end to sit right here and just take this, okay? But... He elects to throw this football into extremely heavy traffic, and that's just never, ever, ever going to be completed, okay? Just got to be smarter situationally there. All right, so now we get to this fourth down situation, okay? And, you know, you, you, it's highly likely you're going to get this. That's why you got to just take those yards on third. And this actually does get open, right? So, um you're running, I, I think this is called Ohio, okay? So you're running a go here and a deep out behind it. And where this DB is leveraged, you have to like the out, right? Because this go, ro go, ro go route is going to take this DB vertically. So this area of the field is open, okay? Now, once again, Spencer Rattler is not the biggest guy. So if you're not the biggest guy, um... Bull rushes are a little bit more effective, right? Guys that are just, even though they're not getting a ton of pressure, they're just collapsing this pocket. And this is a difficult throw to make, all right? But you'll see that this pocket is okay, right? And he bails out here to the left side. None of your routes are being run to the left side, okay? So I would have loved to have seen him at least plant and throw this ball right here, okay, because it's there. Now, it's difficult, all right, and you have to honestly time this absolutely perfect, but it was there. All things considered, he does do a good job bailing out and giving 89 a chance to make this play right here at the sticks, uh, but let's take a look at the end zone camera. All right, so, you know, typical Georgia, right? Uh, they're, they're trying to overload you on this side, and we get a little green dog action right here from the linebacker. He sees that the running back is staying in, so he's blitzing now. And now Spencer Rattler is rolling out to the left side. And let's be honest, this pocket is fine, right, especially on fourth and long. Uh, I would have loved to have seen him sip, step, uh, sit in there and, and just rip that ball and live to fight a day with uh, Xavier Leggett making that play or giving Xavier Leggett a chance to make this play. But this was honestly open, Okay, and this is a tough throw, but it is a bit of a misfire um, with the rusher right there. And once again, that's 89. Remember, we brought him up earlier. Um, he's wearing number 89. Okay, so not, not a big time player. Um, j just very, very, very unfortunate. All right, we get to this. We are really backed up. Six minutes left to go. You're down by 10 in a game. You probably don't feel you should have been down by 10. Huh? 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 Uh, this is a, just a ridiculous throw. Um, and it was dropped. Okay? Um, that is just some excellent, excellent, excellent ball placement. And, and Leggett just lets that go. And you'll see it right here. You know, when it comes to putting a ball on the dot, um, especially on end breakers, for a shorter quarterback, Spencer Rattler is really good. Um you know, on end breakers, and that ball is is just dropped. All right, it's a tough catch, but it's dropped. <sighs> I'm telling you, I I I, I just wish. Whew, I'm telling you, I wish every single one of you could experience what it's like being on the road 
in the SEC, man. There is nothing quite like being in a stadium on a Saturday, going up against an elite team, right? Uh, and I'm an SEC guy, right? Man, this is uh, so it's a pretty good quarterback right here by Spencer Rattler. Waits for this dig uh, to come across, and our guy, number 89, makes a good catch. And, uh, man, it would have been nice to see him make somebody miss. He's not able to, and he goes straight down. And I want you to see this. I mean, right here, he actually gets some good protection. And I don't care what you say. You, you could have the best pocket in the world. When your feet are in the end zone, it is nerve-wracking, right? You got all these fans just screaming. It's loud. They're trying to close out this game. And look at this missile right here, okay? Um you know, obviously, he, he saw just a tad bit late, but still, backed up. I'll take that throw all day, every day. All right, here we go. It's third and Damascus again, right? Third and Timbuktu. It is a long way here, and this is one of my favorite play designs versus a deep zone, which is dagger, right? You're running a go here, you're running a go here, and you're running a deep dig across the way, okay? So, this protection breaks down. Now, once again, it is a longer developing play. Once again, the center and the guard get beat. The South Carolina offensive line was so bad. I want you to see where Spencer is now, and look at where these routes are, okay? It's very jumbled up, all right? So we need this go to hurry up and clear out. We need this go to hurry up and clear out, and we need this dig to get across as quick as you possibly can, okay? So Rattler steps up, and now he sees this dig coming across, and look at when he is throwing this football, okay? This is ridiculous quarterback play. He's actually throwing it uh, a, a, like a tad second before I actually stopped it. Look at this, okay? That is ridiculous. While he's getting destroyed by a 300-pound human, hits him right in the chest, okay? Now, I will say one thing that did benefit Spencer Rattler in this game is the fact that, uh, you know, you can't really hit the quarterback anymore. There were about seven times I called in the, uh, I charted in this game where if this game was played even five years ago, Rattler would have been buried and probably knocked out for the game. Nevertheless, even though it's easier for a quarterback to make those types of throws now with a guy right in your face, you, you still got to make the throw, right? This is still a six foot three, 300 pound man, and you feel it. And you'll see, look at the, I mean, this is just a ridiculous launch point as well. Look, his front foot is actually, you know, in, in the direction of the sideline. And the fact that he's able to still uncork this is really freaking impressive okay the defensive line obviously doesn't hit him uh because you don't want to you know roughing call to to give him an easy first down that is still a ridiculous throw right on the numbers okay and our guy 89 makes a play ha, ha, ha. all right and then we get to the interception here i mean basically what they're trying to do is run an out and up right here so he's running out and then actually uh, going up the field and you can see that this is just never going to work with them sitting this far back once again it is third and sydney um man it's, it's just it's just never going to work you do just need to toss this up um i understand you can let the fight for another down on fourth but i mean the game is getting late you're down by two possessions and this does get picked off uh, pretty easily right here uh, by Georgia to end the game, and you'll get the end zone angle, okay? Now, to wrap this up, you know, I, I watched a good bit of Spencer Rattler at the Senior Bowl, and he was impressive, right, in interviews and then just in actual games, right? He was the Senior Bowl MVP. Um, and we just did the breakdown about him and Brock Purdy being the same exact quarterback, all the way down to where they played high school, all the way down to their height and weight. And that video will be floating in your face here in just a second. I do want to add um, some extra context to this game, okay? 
Um, I looked at PFS charting data, and this was one of Spencer's higher graded games. This was also the second highest graded game by the Georgia defense on the season. So this Georgia defense played really well in this game, and you still saw a bunch of ridiculous plays from Spencer Rattler in this game, right? You saw some bad ones, of course, but... You know, the, the first bit of context is we didn't show you any of South Carolina's running game because, well, there wasn't any. This was actually Georgia's highest graded rush defense game on the season. Uh, there was no running game to complement South Carolina's passing game here, and it's because this offensive line isn't that great, and, and Georgia is Georgia, right? The second thing is Antoine Juice Wells, the guy who had the opening touchdown, got hurt in this game. And not only did he get hurt in this game, like I referenced a little bit earlier, he never returned, right? And it's important to also point out when discussing Spencer Rattler, South Carolina had the most difficult start to the year when it comes to scheduling, right? South Carolina played rival North Carolina in a Power 5 out-of-conference game they did not need to schedule, but they scheduled it anyway, and Drake May lit them up. Then in Week 2, they played you know a not-so-great Furman team, but in Week 3, Boom. First SEC game of the season is at Georgia. Now, could he have thrown that dig right there? Sure, but take these rushing yards. Why not? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy how difficult the schedule was for South Carolina. I would argue that they had the hardest schedule, arguably along with the Florida Gators, and Spencer Rattler just kept trucking along throughout this year. Um, the Florida game from Spencer Rattler, a game that they lost – by the way, South Carolina's defense is terrible. Their defensive coordinator is one of the lower-graded defensive coordinators um, in the SEC per CFP matrix. Um, it, 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 they did not have a great defense. And the reason why I bring all this up is wherever Spencer Rattler goes in the NFL, he's likely not going to a bad franchise, right? He is more than likely going to be going to a team that's going to have a better infrastructure than South Carolina had last year, right? Yes, they had Xavier Leggett, um, but you also got to remember South Carolina lost Marshawn Lloyd in the transfer portal, their best running back by far um, before the season. He's about to get selected. So Spencer Rattler's supporting cast got worse his senior season, and he got better. So I am very intrigued by his NFL draft prospects. I'm very intrigued with his interviews. Yes, he's not the biggest guy. Yes, he's not a great athlete by any stretch of the imagination. There are quarterback coaches who believe he has an elite arm. Um, One who's a good friend of mine believes he has an elite arm. There are others, like Lance Zerline, who thinks his arm isn't necessarily all that special. Um, I think his arm is very good. And obviously, when he gets into the NFL, I don't think he'll have a top 10 arm. I don't think he would have even a top 15 arm, maybe. But he's still got some juice. Right, So I'm very interested in him as a backup, and I think he could be um, a very good backup because this is a young man who's been humbled right? with the the Caleb Williams benching to where he is now, but you'll learn more about his story um, with this video floating in your face right now. So very interested to see what Rattler is going to do at the next level. Let me know if you love these deeper film study breakdowns, and if this does, let's just say, 15,000 views, we will break down another Spencer Rattler game. How about it? It is power hour NFL, baby. Boom. And tonight, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing cheesesteaks. Let's go. Ha, ha, ha.